What is up everybody? I'm no Lex Given and today we've got a really sweet one with Mimic Chest plus Gloves of Thieving, which come in really, really clutch in the endgame. Plus, we're playing with the Mad Catter, which is a hero that we don't often look at. Though I will say we're not doing too much mad catting in this game. Our turn two shop has a Forbidden Fruit, so I'm just going to pick up Cinderella, Forbidden Fruit, and Sherwood Shore Shop, which is a really strong start, just means we're not rolling that much. Uh, sometimes I do like to play Blind Mouse on Mad Catter, and we could have picked that up last turn, though, like I said, we don't wind up doing too much rolling in this one regardless, so uh, not a huge deal, but I like the Blind Mouse because you are typically rolling more on this hero. Uh, and then next turn, we're just going to wind up picking up two characters in the shop. But we do get to pick up some interesting characters here. We pick up a Wizard's Familiar, and then I'm going to shard this Sure Shot and hope to get one of those other two evil characters. And we get another goat, so that is fun. Uh, so now we've got Cinderella halfway through completion and a pair of goats. I even think about selling off the golden chicken here because then we could pick up the crafty while we're close to completing some more treasures, but I'm just gonna save the golden chicken. I felt like maybe it would help with rolling in some future turns and picking up some additional power that way. So not going to worry about the crafty. And then we do actually get a win up against Apocalypse. So we're gonna stay strong at 35 health after taking some damage from that first combat. And I'm not rolling again this turn. I'm picking up Good Witch plus Ogre Princess and then the Sugar and Spice. And I do think that like partially maybe the Cinderella is to blame for not doing too much mad catting because I'm spending my extra gold every turn just to cast a spell uh, rather than using it to roll. So uh, yeah, definitely a little bit of a strange one where we're mad catter, but we haven't used our hero power yet. Uh, I'm sure we'll use it at some point throughout the game. It's just not like super impactful, not as impactful as even Cinderella. Cinderella gives us a really good treasure uh, that we're able to make some nice use of. Does look like we're gonna go down to the Pied Piper here. They're pretty strong with the double stag power. And then on this turn, I'm just gonna, I think, make one of my evil characters good to flip over Cinderella. And we see Dragon's Nest as one of the treasures here. Piggy Bank doesn't really do much of anything except for tomorrow's video, but Dragon's Nest can be a really, really sweet treasure. Once you hit level four, it just gives you a whole bunch more power on the board. So I'm always excited to pick that one up. It's a little bit early for it maybe, but we'll still be able to make some good use out of that next turn. Our rolls for Mad Catter aren't super powerful here. I wind up picking up a Princess Peep, uh, and then I move around the Good Witches so that way we can support the Peeps. I should have moved over everything one more. I just didn't have enough time to, uh, but ultimately this winds up being fine. We summon some sheep and uh, all of the sheep have uh, some extra bonuses and that's enough to win this combat up against Peter Pants. So we're doing pretty good here. We get a free character off of the Ogre Princess. We get to triple up on the Good Witch and Bad Moon seems pretty good with the dragons that we're looking to pick up next turn. Also the Ogre Princess, and we've got the uh, Shadow Assassin here as well. So we're definitely building into this theme. And then I'm just gonna pick up the Baby Root to end the turn. And uh, a 3-6 Baby Root with, with the plus three, plus three on it, I thought was good enough. I will wind up finding some free rolls at the end of the turn. I'm not sure, maybe you're supposed to lock this here and then you have a free roll so that way you get to give a free plus four plus four to something as Mad Catter. Uh, that definitely could have been an option that we took, but ultimately going to decide to not lock into this one. And we still have a really strong board for right now, a 9-9 Ogre Princess plus a 7-17 Shadow Assassin and uh, the Water Wraith gets to grow a little bit from these sheep. So altogether, this is pretty good. That's going to leave us with 30 health still going into level four. And now we're like on top of the lobby other than that uh, Pied Piper that just beat us. So doing pretty good. And if we can find some 
dragons this turn, then we can continue to do some pretty good stuff here. So that seems sweet. I'm going to decline picking up the shard of the Ice Queen there, but I am definitely interested in a court wizard with plus four, plus four on it. That plus the fact that we already have three royals to pair that with is really, really good stuff. Uh, so now I'm just looking if I can sell off three things and pick up a feasting dragon this turn, and we definitely can, and an 11-13 is going to be good to have, plus the sooner we grab that, the sooner that starts scaling. Uh, I wind up sharding the Shadow Assassin, and that gives us a Spell Weaver, about the same thing. Uh, I don't even know if I should have sharded it, to be totally honest, but that is what we do. Uh, but regardless, I'm excited about the Feasting Dragon pickup and the Court Wizard pickup. Court Wizard is one of the better characters to synergize with Mad Catter, because uh, just those the bonus stats on a Court Wizard get to go so, so far. Uh, Feasting Dragon is going to get to slay, so that's nice as well. It'll get some bonus stats, as well as give everything else some bonus stats, including this pair of Lightning Dragons. So all we have to do, basically to win this lobby, I feel like, is find a River Wish Mermaid. If we can do that, we're in a really good spot. And part of the reason that I'm saying that we actually never find a River Wish Mermaid. The, the whole time, the whole time, I never find a River Wish Mermaid despite having like the perfect setup for it. And that's part of why we wind up having to get a little bit creative with uh, the Gloves of Thieving and stuff later on. But for right now, we're gonna see how much we can feast and how much we can grow the rest of our board here and uh, the rest of our shops and everything and do sweet stuff. Oh, I might have to mute this. I think I hear uh, like a podcast or something going off in the background. Um, but these lightning dragons are gonna go off really well for us and then feasting dragon going to slay as well. Uh, we do see that the fates has a puzzle rune, so that's a little bit scary, uh, but we're doing good. We still get to hit them for some damage and uh, our ogre princess was also able to slay, so that was really sweet. We do see a ranged character character here with plus four plus four so that's kind of tempting but I really want River Wish Mermaid as well as some additional dragon so I'm gonna keep on rolling past that I do find a triple for lightning dragon wasn't exactly what I was looking for but I'm gonna take it and that gives us the gloves of thieving one of the uh, titular cards for this video titular treasures here so that is like an interesting treasure always when you get it from Lightning Dragon because it means that you're always going to be stealing supports. But right now we don't have supports, so that could be really good for us getting to steal some Baba Yagas and River Wish Mermaids if people have those down the line. Spoiler alert. Alert. Spoiler alert. No River Wish Mermaids to be found, unfortunately, but we are still going to get some sweet slays with these Feasting Dragons and Lightning Dragons in the meantime. Opponent also with Feasting Dragon, so it could have been nice to steal that, but we always have to steal a backline character first. Uh, we're giving my opponent a ton of extra gold with Greedy, so they're set up to do some sweet stuff. They've already fully activated their hero power, so um, that one's fun, and they've got a ton of extra cash there, so that'll be interesting to see what they pull together. We do get a free support. We grab a 12-12 Sporko, so that's pretty nice. We'll get to support our Feasting Dragons with that one. And then we could see two level 5 characters by flipping off this Masquerade Ball. Flipping off this Masquerade Ball, definitely not the right words for it, but we'll pick up a Lancelot after that. And then Robin Wood, another ranged character, seems way too good to pass up. So I'm going to grab that as well. I'm going to sell off two of these things. Um, doesn't really matter what I sell off. I'll probably just sell off the Peep and the Puff Puff, and that allows us to pick up this Robin Wood. I guess the Spell Weaver's just the same too. I think the Ogre Princess I probably should have held on to, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, Robin Wood's gonna get to pump up that Court Wizard, so that'll be a nice character for us. And we can see that a Pac has, a Pac has some nice characters as well, but our dragons are a little bit bigger, uh, and our Lancelot is going to get the slay my opponent also with gloves of thieving uh so everybody's stealing stuff throughout this lobby they stole our dragon and we took a sporko from them lancelot very very close to activating so that's really sweet and uh we'll see if we can't find a way to just give that plus two plus two this turn 
though I have to pick up the Turkish Delight here. I felt like um, it was just too good with the other stuff we had going on. Now, one thing that I would like to do is pick up Baba Yaga, and then if I find another Sporko, then we'll be able to activate Lancelot, or if Lance can just slay and stay. If it's able to do that, then that's also a nice way to grab the Tier 5 treasure from that one as well. Uh, so moving around some things to try to figure out the best alignments for our dragons, but uh, the Baba Yaga actually gets to be bigger than uh, the Sporko here, so that's nice as well. And uh, yeah, all we've got to do is slay and have that Lancelot stick around, and I think we're like set up pretty nicely. We're going to continue to steal support characters here. Oh no, we actually get the Vulture. I thought we were stealing another Baba Yaga. Like I said, that would have been uh, really sweet. Unfortunately, Lancelot is unable to slay here, and this is a really, really close combat, but we do wind up losing and taking a little bit of damage from the lobby leader. But that's all right. We're going to be able to activate Lancelot now, so that's pretty cool. Once we uh, skip this treasure, Lancelot already has 26 attack. And we also get to pick up Jormungand. And uh, I do like the good boy as well. We could go good boy plus coin of share, and that's something that, at the very least, considering right now. But I'm going to instead decide to drop the Dragon's Nest and just pick up Jormungand and then have some additional spending cash for next turn. And if we can ever find a Riverwish Mermaid, I think that would be really, really sweet with this board still because we do have the Jormungand. But short of that, I don't know. Um, we will have the Lancelot activating, and if that can start slaying and stuff, then, then that's obviously pretty nice. Uh, but maybe we'll wind up stealing a totally different comp with Gloves of Thieving. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where we're going in this direction. That's always an interesting part about Feasting Dragon is like, it's your comp for so long and you build around it, but you're willing to play into other comps once they present themselves. Uh, they just haven't uh, quite presented themselves yet. So we are going to get that Lancelot activation, and now we've got two really good options in Hand of Midas and Staff of the Old Toad, both of which allow you to really make some moves in terms of picking up some other big comps in the future. And almost wish I grabbed the Hand of Midas here, but we've got a lot of cool stuff to pick up from this shop with double Empress P plus a Jormungand. So I want all of this. I got to sell off a few more things here. The Golden Chicken plus probably Ogre Princess that we just picked up. Um, or maybe now is just the time to sell off these Feasting Dragons because Ogre Princess could also help us really get into a comp. So that one could be sweet as well. So we do have some slaying stuff now that we were able to steal this Ogre Princess and activate this Lancelot. I don't quite know which one I want to put first, but ultimately this is what I'm going to go for. Uh, Empress P not slaying yet, but still just a good character that can pump up that Sporko in the back line. And uh, after that lag, we're going to see that Sporko get pretty big. Lancelot's going to slay and Empress P is going to slay. So we've got a lot, a lot of options in terms of picking up some more stuff for this board. We're going to populate the shop here with some free level six characters, and that lets us triple on the Empress P and on the Jormungand. So that's really sweet. And you might have noticed this here, but we're in the finals now. This game is almost over. So I'm going to pick up the Mimic Chest plus the Phoenix Feather. That's going to give us a really large... Um, or just a double uh, Mimic Chest, which is, or a double Phoenix Feather, rather, which is always really nice. And then I'll pick up another Baba Yaga and another Jormungand. And this is all great. Like, we've got a really, really strong board right now. The one thing that I will say that is kind of a weakness is... We don't really have huge characters that we're slaying with, so I'm going to go and just throw this sugar and spice onto Lancelot, and um, hopefully we can grab a slay with Lancelot. Unfortunately, not going to be able to do so. My opponent's characters are just a little bit, a little bit too big. So we're going to wind up taking a bunch of damage on this one. Actually, Sporko gets to clean it up some, and then we double summon the Sporko. Oh, so maybe we actually grab the win here. Wow. Okay, this is a pretty big turnaround. Grabbing both of those tier 6 treasures were definitely clutch, and we were able to get both of them thanks to that Ogre Princess that we also stole. So 
uh, yeah, definitely a lot of stuff going on there. Lance, though, not really looking to slay. So this board is like kind of falling off a little bit. And that's where I'm a little bit fearful. We have still not seen a River Wish Mermaid in all this time. Let me know in the comments if you've seen a River Wish Mermaid and I've missed it. But I have not. So we're in kind of an awkward spot because I want to... I need to, like, this is the comp that I'm playing, but my characters are just a little bit too small and unable to slay. But if we are able to steal my opponent's Aeon yet again, which we will be able to, because that's going to be their first character to die. Their other characters are too big, and their Aeon is in that first position to attack first. So we grab two more Aeons here which actually gives us an upgraded Aeon right now. I also moved around my board a little bit so that Empress P would be the character that we were resummoning this time. That's gonna give us some pretty strong ranged characters in the back line, which is actually still enough to get the win yet again. But now we are really playing for the win as we grab this Aeon with 156 attack after it's pumped up, or 150 attack after it's pumped up by a Baba Yaga, which means that we are actually going to be able to slay in this combat, and then we'll actually be able to grow our Yormagans, and then we'll actually be able to win. And I just thought this was such a funny one. I mean, we've been winning all of these combats up until this point. This was like a very quick game, and the lobby just like disappeared out of nowhere. But I still thought that this was a really fun one because we really didn't have any chance of slaying until we started stealing some of my opponent's characters. And I think there's a decent chance that my opponent could have come back from this one. But now we're going to give them no room to do so as our Aeon that we stole is just absolutely massive. It's going to resummon, so we lose our Phoenix Feathers. But we've got two massive Jormungans, and that's going to be enough to close things down here and get the win against my opponent. So really, really sweet one. Uh, I know a lot of people love Gloves of Thieving, haven't really gotten to show it off in a little bit, but I thought this was a great game to do so. If you're looking for that piggy bank game though, I kind of teased that during the uh, level when we picked up the dragon's nest, but that one I think is going to be coming tomorrow. Just want to make sure that I do that right for y'all, uh, but that one should be coming soon. But for today, that's going to be it for me. So thank you guys very much for watching. I'm no Lux Given. Peace.